Game one, Rivers, Shang, 1v1. Let's go. So we got Iron Steel as Brown spawning down on this side of the map. And Sissoko off on this side of the map, yellow at 12. He's got an interesting house placement here. He might want to delete. Eh, no, that's going to be fine. So his Gazelle are kind of awkwardly placed. They're a little further back. That's really the biggest thing you want to look for at this point. Players are always going to have pretty good berries. On this setting, it's really rare. It's it's extremely rare to see bugged berries on this setting. Um, as you tend to have a lot of space between you and your wood line, your town center and your wood line. Um, and there aren't as many cliffs, really. You know, there's, there, there tends to be a lot of open area for your initial base. Now, Iron Steel is also going to be luring his gazelle. Oh, wait, maybe... Maybe Sasoko did not see these gazelle up here. That could have been an issue for him. So we're just going to check the river real quick. Just one. One standard crossing. It's funny that we say that's standard. Whereas at this point, this is not the norm in this tournament. Although I do believe... I'm still going to stick with my guns and say that this is the normal thing to see in 1v1 rivers medium. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with it and say that we've been getting a lot of anomalies. Especially that last game we played where we had a... Uh, three crossings. It ended up not really being too impactful, but the fact that there were multiple was an important factor. Um, so Sissoko still has... Uh, that's going to be fun to say. So Sissoko still has his gazelle up here, and he's yet to start luring them, whereas Miguel has... Uh, sorry, Iron Steel has really started to push these in. He's got three at a good spot under his town center, building this house, and this villager will surely come out to push the rest. He's got an elephant very close by for him. So he's going to have a very strong food advantage. Furthermore, Sosoko's other gazelle patch is kind of stuck against this wall here. And that's going to be very difficult for him to utilize fully. Maybe building a wood pit back here, but I don't think he's going to be going for that. I think he's going to go for a safer wood pit. Maybe a more effective wood gathering wood pit. Um, although this would be extremely valuable for him, but I don't think he's scouted this out yet. So I can't say for certain. Still three gazelle for Iron Steel to push in, but it's early on. There's no real rush. He's going for the elephant now, trying to get that early lure. It's really important to get your food sources set up. He did get the hit. Sadly, he took two, but when you're on DE, getting the hit means that that elephant will never, ever stop chasing you. So he can safely get this, or quickly get this back. Although, to say that it was safe isn't really fair, because his vill is very hurt. We'll have to see if this hurt villager comes to be of importance. It can die to like a stray arrow from a scout ship, for example. It can't take more than one hit from a scout ship. Uh, an axer can just bonk it. Uh, two slinger balls. Oh, that sounds weird. I, I didn't mean to say two slinger balls. Two slinger stones. I'll smack that guy. Hard enough to kill. So having a hurt bill early on, never really good. So Sissoko, okay, maybe not feeling comfortable doing the full town center lure. It's going to really slow down his time by pitting these gazelle. This is, this is, oh, this is rough. That's going to feel really bad for him. He might have enough wood. I guess he has enough wood for another pit. So it's not too bad. Both players having a pit up now. But I believe Iron Steel is going to have a very significant advantage when it comes to the food department. Yeah, so he's up three bills, which just shows faster clicks, more effective, not getting housed, little things like that, not letting your town center idle. Um, that Something may have gone on here. Maybe it was house, a housing issue. I'm not sure. I don't know what's going on. Maybe it was these berries being inefficient. He's got some idols here that he needs to sort out. Hopefully Sissoko can figure this out before too soon because Iron Steel has stopped at 20 vills. And Sissoko might be stopping at 17, which would be a very low vill count for a tool time. Now he does have... He's really struggling with getting these, this food. Maybe he just clicked now. I would assume he just clicked now if he did that. He force dropped and didn't send them back into berries again. So the, the vill count is going to be very much so in favor of Iron Steel. And, oof. I mean, three bills already. It's like, he already, you already rushed him. And here comes the rush. Is he going to be even faster? So, Soko sending two villagers forward to this crossing. 
He's going to spot this barracks and know of the danger. Is he going to back? Yeah, he saw the barracks, backed off. Where's he going to plant his? Is he going to plant it right next? Is he going for the, the aggro play? What's the choice here? What are his options? He's going aggressive. He's going to go counterattack. Probably. It's hard to say if that's the better move. Counterattacking. If you're confident in your speed, counterattacking can be good. And here is Iron Steel with the first clever out. He's already hit tool. Wow. This is a big difference in speed. Um, but also strength. Uh, this almost feels a little one-sided with the speed difference. We're going to be getting the extra upgrades right now. Uh, the barracks coming in for Iron Steel again. Now, that's not to discount Sissoko. He has now hit Tool as well, just a minute behind. But is this minute going to be too jarring? His barracks has yet to produce a unit. He may be doing his upgrades now. I don't think he knows that this is technically open. Although, because of the way the Gazelle are blocking it, the pathing won't be too bad for him. Question is, what is Miguel going, or what is Iron Steel going for now? He's going for a dock. Bold move. I like it. We'll see if he goes for that early scout ship to try to deny vision, or go for um, a fishing boat or two just to boost up his eco. Now, Sissoko. Uh oh. I think Miguel's going to notice this. Sorry, Miguel is also Iron Steel, and I, I'm always going to mess that up. Uh oh. Uh-oh. So, Iron Steel did not notice that this was open. Oh, he's coming back. I think he saw it. He saw it. The wall's coming in, but he's going to spread these. He has to know that this is a thing. This is really important for this match. Oh, they didn't... What? They didn't scatter. Oh, my gosh. Wow, he could have gotten in right there, but he, uh... Wasn't able to accomplish it. Sorry, I was really focused in on that, and I may have missed something else here. Just some of Iron Steel's axers running out on the map, finding stuff, and a really aggro scout. Is he going to get in? He got in with two scouts unupgraded, but that is going to be a lot of dead villagers for Iron Steel. Now, that is a big hit, and that's kind of the start of this, I guess. Scouts proving very impactful here. No armor, so he could clump his villagers and fight effectively. He sees that. That's a lot. That's a lot of scouts to deal with, though. That's way too many scouts. Still no upgrades on the scouts. He needs to protect these villagers if he wants to keep a safe sea economy slash military base. <laughs> this villager somehow lived. He somehow avoided the onslaught of scouts. As they now move across the map, is... Iron Steel going to be able to defend this. Now, the scouts are going to be absolutely brutal here. They're going to find the economy way more efficiently than Iron Steel's Axers, especially when you consider that the Axers are indeed walled out of this area. Now, the scouts are going out on the map and they're not going to find, I think, what he was looking for. I think he was looking for some stray bills and they're here. Oh, he's going to get them now. Still no upgrades, so only 20 HP on these, and that means the villagers will take care of it pretty handily. But if the second scout comes over to help, ooh, Iron Steel is in trouble with those villagers. Maybe, maybe when you go aggressive, you need to dock block this, or put some wall tiles here to really help you out. I think that this is going to swing the tide of this battle here, with these villagers going down, and this scout also coming over. These villagers aren't dead yet, which is surprising me. Is Iron Steel going to notice and bone that as well? Leaving one Axer here to defend this wood line. Sending him out, maybe to go hunt for these stables. Now, interestingly, Iron Steel has full control of the sea. At this point, at this juncture, Iron Steel has the river. It gives him exclusive access to a lot of food income. But... Sosoko is safe in his base, and he's using farms for food income, so both of them have a pretty safe income for now, as long as this doesn't go down. As long as his wall stays up, he's going to have food income for more scouts here. So what's going to happen is that as scouts pour out, 
Iron Steel is going to have more and more pressure on him to wall something in, to make safe, or to deal with these stables. Because currently, these stables are the only military buildings that can actually produce threatening units. And as I say that, I lied, because the Slingers come in as if on cue from Iron Steel. These are threatening, but scouts handle Slingers very effectively. Iron Steel with some defensive axemen at home. The Slingers are here. Is Sissoko going to be sending scouts back across the map to help him out? I think he needs to send some scouts home. Sissoko is really trapped in here. He's losing access to his wood. His villagers are kind of idling. He's going to try to re-micro them to this wood line, but as this Slinger Mask grows for Iron Steel, it's going to get harder and harder for Sissoko to repair behind the walls. Now, that being said, just a few farms, if focused, all the food from this farm could be put towards more scouts, and scouts beat slingers. Let's just remember this. Especially slingers without upgrades. So this is going to put Iron Steel in a bit of a tricky situation if scouts make it across the map. But it seems like Sissoko is Excuse me. Sissoko is opting to go on the aggressive here into two axers, and these axers are certainly going to win this fight, I believe. Especially if a few villagers come. Yeah, three villagers are going to come to help out, kill one of the slingers, and the axers will be more than enough, especially considering that the scout did not have attack upgrades, and the slingers did not have upgrades. Wow, that is bold. When did he mine all that stone? When did he mine stone? Am I crazy, or did I miss something incredible? He's been mining stone here. Okay, that's important to know. Now, <laughs> these towers will actually go down to singers, with, especially if Iron Steel is able to get the upgrades in. It really helps against those singers. Slingers getting a bonus damage against buildings. And with the Pierce Armor, really do not care about towers. He's just going to sit under them and kill the villagers, making food income. The towers are not going to be enough to deter these slingers for now. But with limited food, Iron Steel might be hard pressed to replace those units. Some idle vills back at home. So the aggression from Soko was at least threatening enough to distract him, to serve it. And Sissoko calls it. I think we kind of saw that coming once those slingers came out. Still no upgrade, like no market yet for Iron Steel, but he didn't need it, I guess. I mean,. It probably would have helped a lot in the combat. Maybe he let had him. It would have let him take on the towers, but he didn't really need to. He can just kind of avoid the towers and and uh, attack the villagers here. Very aggressive game from Iron Steel, building the two barracks, crossing the map, and just full full control of the sea, un un unperturbed. Really, I don't think um, I don't think Sosoko ever tried to build a dock that game. Which is going to definitely be a hindrance if your opponent is playing aggressive and is also on the sea. You're going to get out um, outproduced from the military buildings really quickly if you are pushed off your defending buildings. So now we can jump into game. can jump into game number two. Uh, excuse me while I update the scoreboard. That's the scoreboard. Excuse me, just drinking some water real quick. What a nice game from them both. 
as I kind of predicted a bit, but not fully, that game, what? That game was fast and aggressive. You know, both players. Yes. We're ready for that. But I think a big aspect of that game may have been, and as we jump into game two, I'm just going to go over game one a bit more. I think that Iron Steel really showed the skill disparity the most when he aged up to Tool first with three more villagers, was it? Wait, so like that's that's a significant that's like a minute and a half of town center time ahead. Which is pretty significant. Anyway, jumping into game number two, we can take a look at the minimap here. We have a dual crossing map. Um we got Iron Steel over here at seven ish, seven ish, eight ish on the clock. And Sissoko is on three o'clock in the brown pieces. Now, the real question here is what does Sissoko do differently? Right, how, how does he overcome this opponent? His opponent showed himself like to be very capable of being aggressive, being in his face, not worrying about market techs, not worrying too much about unit upgrades, like specific specific unit types. He didn't really care too much that the scouts were around. Maybe maybe this series will be short if if Iron Steel is able to pull off another decisive victory, such as the previous one. But maybe that won't happen. We don't know. We don't know. This gazelle running far and wide. The players equal on their start this time. We'll have to see if Sosoko gets a clean gazelle lure this game. Last time he did the pit. And remember, that pit really slowed him down when he did the Gazelle Lure in the first game. So, I'd be interested to see if he avoids that this time. Maybe he understands that it was a mistake and just had no other options at the time or something. He did not explore his Gazelle quickly, so maybe that was what caused that. So maybe it was a lack of exploration. And here we see two scouts for um, Sissoko. Well, I guess one is a push. A Gazelle pusher, but... He got a little bit of information, I think. The scout from Iron Steel coming in contact with the crocodile. Bang. Bop. This town center also, once again, looking much better. With those five gazelle already lured well before Sissoko has a handle on his gazelle count. Now the next question is, who gets the wood put up first for these little minute economy details of the starting of the starting age? When you're in the Stone Age, there are a couple things you can do to really buy a lot of time, and when you have Axer Wars that are this uh, violent, it's really important, or I guess brutal is the better word. It's it, like 30 seconds of... Uh, being 30 seconds faster is a huge advantage. It, it really comes out in the game, so it's important to try to min-max every villager's movement as best as you can. And I know Iron Steel is someone who does that. He cares about the villager movement in the early game a lot. He, he really focuses on making sure that his wood lines are clean. He doesn't waste villager time for as much as he can. He makes efficient paths. This villager's hiding in the woods as I say that. But it's better to keep a villager idle than to run it in to die. If you're not going to be able to pay attention. Now another villager coming out for Iron Steel. It, it, curious to see where this is going. Right towards a double line. But he has a hill to work with. Dun dun da dun 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 He doesn't notice. He noticed. He might go to the villa a bit. But there's nothing he can do. He could try a house trick. And that alligator is going to come bop him. Oof. Wow. Wow. That's sad. Look at they made a smiley face. You see that? It's a little face. <laughs> anyway. That's not very important. Whoa, I just got a weird graphical glitch. Anyway, back to the game. Excuse me. 
I got a little distracted. Uh, 2020 this time, so this is much better for Sissoko in terms of economy and management. We'll have to see what the time says, though. If Iron Steel is significantly ahead again in terms of speed, we could be a, we could be seeing a similar outcome. Now, there are berries over here for Iron Steel, and he will find those. And while he's doing that, he will also discover his two elephants off to this corner. Both players on 20, so it depends on who's going to hit that illustrious toolage first. Now, Iron Steel with a really aggressive barracks, and this is perfectly placed for an axe rush. Um, this clover has already found the wood line. The question is, did Sissoko see that clover for the second? Probably. He should have. You need to see it. That's something that you have to be watching your eyes for. Or wa watching your eyes for? Watching out for. With your eyes. Because that's how you look at things. With your eyes. And <laughs> when you when you get the second barracks in, and Iron Steel already up. Wow. That's a pretty fast time. 860 with 20 bills is... 860. 8, like 55 was it? With 20 bills? Yeah, slightly before 9. It's going to be extremely brutal. Now, clever on clever action, but with the plus 2 armor and the extra upgrade on route, Iron Seal is going to have a slight advantage, but if he takes a fight like this that is inefficient, it might not might not pay off. The extra upgrade being critical to winning these fights, he also gets no damage upgrade yet, actually. Those must have been some hurt bills. Oh, he had a hill. It's a bit of a hill here to work with to fight these other clubbers. And that's going to be a lot of damage coming in for free purely because of his speed. You know, they had even numbers, but Iron Steel was able to get those critical techs that upgrade your axes just a little bit sooner. And now... And now Sissoko's on the run. He's on the run already, and that's really sad to see this early on in a game. It's ten minutes in, and you're running. You don't you don't like to be that you don't like to have an exodus like this. Especially in a one v one. Maybe in a team game you can get away with hiding behind an ally for a bit and their strength can cover your weakness. But once again, Iron Steel, as as was as occurred in game one, has the dock out first. Both players have now discovered that there's another crossing here, but that won't be too influential. I don't think. That's not really going to matter, because these villagers are all on the run, and that is all of the economy for Sissoko. That's all he has. Everything is under duress. He has a couple farms here, but that's not going to be enough. These three villagers are going to walk off into a straggler. This is extremely inefficient. Meanwhile, Iron Steel has a very strong base at home. His wood line is still superb. He's got a fresh granary with a bunch of berries to bushel up and bundle for food. Another dock covering the strait. Even though they don't fully cover the strait, it gives you vision of the strait. A big radius. They have a lot of vision. It's like that, right? No, like a little bit more, right? You see, oh no, it's like that big, right? That you can see. It's like a th an extra three tiles out. And he will be getting fishing boats on both sides. And he's paying attention. He's watching. That one villager is the last one left of the exodus. The entire exodus has died. And we're going to... Get some HD version of some Terminator shit going on. Ba -da -ba. He's gonna die in the woods alone. <laughs> Me IRL. So he's dead. This guy, these guys are dead. This game's over, man. This game is so over. Iron Steel, quick, out, quick as a button, getting that. Slinger immediately, and that's that's all he has left. And that game was fast, brutal, and quick. And that is the series, best of three. Immediately.